Hi everyone, this is Manas, your friend and tutor, and I'm back with another video on friction. So this problem in front of us, it has already been solved with the help of analytical technique. And if you haven't seen that, I would appreciate if you go and see that the link to which can be found in the description down below. Today in this video, I'll let you know as to how this particular problem can be solved with the help of what you know as Lamy's theorem. It's going to be very, very interesting. But first of all, what we need to do is we need to free these two bodies and do the force analysis. So let's quickly go ahead and do that. Here we go. So there are essentially two blocks. One is this 1000 Newton block, which has to be tightened. How is this done? Well, we are doing this with the help of this wedge. We are pushing this wedge in the downward direction with this force P. And this is the force which we need to find. Now, if you watch carefully, this 1000 Newton block is in contact over here along this horizontal surface and just a little bit along this um, vertical surface. Now, when this wedge is driven in the downward direction, the block 1000 Newton block will push towards this vertical surface and it will slide slightly, slightly towards the right along this horizontal surface. So there is going to be friction only at this point. And let's call this point as point one. There will be no friction along this vertical surface. Secondly, the point of contact is this one. Okay, the wedge is in contact with this um, with this 1000 Newton block and let's call this as point of contact two. And finally, the point of contact of this say wedge with the wall, you can say, let's call this as point of contact three. Now guys, what we need to do is we need to make the free body diagram of both the blocks, that is the wedge as well as the block. And here we go. It's going to be fun. Watch this. And here it is. These are the forces. Okay. So this is point one. Point one. So obviously there is going to be a normal. This is going to be N1. Now, if you watch carefully, I told you, if you are trying to, if you're trying to draw, drive this wedge in the downward sense, this block will have a tendency to slightly move towards the right, isn't it? And in that process, it will have a friction force slightly towards the left this way. And this is going to be mu n. Mu n is nothing but this is mu for all the contacting surfaces and times of normal that is n1 that is mu n1 it's that simple secondly this block b is in contact with this uh, wedge okay so the wedge is going to offer a normal to this block b and that normal is represented by let's say n2 since this is point of contact 2 well th if this is the action n2 onto this 1000 newton block there is going to be a reaction in the form of this n2 that is blue colored arrow magnitude is same the direction is slightly different. Now this blue colored arrow is from this 1000 Newton block onto this wedge. That's it. And there is obviously going to be a friction force. If you watch carefully, this wedge will try to move in the downward direction. Therefore, this, this block 1000 Newton block will offer it a friction in the upper direction. Okay, friction force from this block B 1000 Newton block B onto this wedge will be in the upper direction. Why? Because the wedge is trying to move in the downward direction. That's why. Similarly, if this is the action, there is going to be a reaction over here. And obviously action and reaction, the magnitude is going to be same zero point uh, mu n. And here the normal is n2. So mu n2 here as well as here. That's it. Mu's value is 0 0.25 at every point of contact. That's it. And finally, we have this. This is going to be n3 normal to the surface n3 here. And this is since this is trying to move in the downward direction, therefore friction friction force in the upward direction and that's 0 0.25 n3 now to move further let me tell you something the coefficient of friction for all the point of contacts has been given as 0 0.25 and if i were to calculate the value of angle of friction it can be calculated with the help of this formula tan inverse of mu and when you put this value 0 0.25 here this is going to work out as 14.03 degrees Okay, now let, let me show you all the forces acting. Here they are. All right, now let's take a look at this point of contact three. If you watch carefully, this N3 and 0 0.25 N3, this normal and this frictional force can be replaced by one single force and that is the resultant. And we know that the resultant at all point of contacts is gonna make the same angle, 14.03, that's for sure. So the resultant will be acting somewhere along this direction, if I'm not wrong. Yes, and this is going to be the 
arrow this is going to be r3 and this angle made over here is none other than 14.03 degrees so what i can do is i know very well that this is the horizontal with which this r3 is making an angle how much 14.03 so let me crack it here that's r3 that's the direction of r3 this is 14.03 let me write it that's r3 with the horizontal 14.03 and here also with the horizontal 14.03 secondly force p is acting in the downward sense so we'll have a force p over here let me write it rather p and the next thing is this is point of contact 2 okay so this n2 as well as this 0.25 n2 can be replaced by one single force that is the resultant itself and that resultant will be something like this let me try to make it in a proper way and this is going to be what you call r2 and r2 is again going to make a certain angle how much is this angle this is angle phi and if i can extend this this is the angle how much if you watch carefully this is nothing but angle 15 degrees this is 15 degrees from here to here and this is how much 14.03 degrees so guys just think about this 15 degrees plus 14.03 will work out as 29.03 so essentially the resultant r2 makes a complete angle of 29.03 with this horizontal so let me put it over here with the horizontal okay and that's the force let me make it that's the force the name is r2 making an angle of how much well this angle is um, 29.03 with the horizontal and here also same angle same stuff 29.03 so all the forces have been worked out as far as this this uh, wedge is concerned now let's try to try to work out all the forces acting on this 1000 newton block okay just like this resultant was acting in the sort of upward sense here and making an angle of 29.03 right with the horizontal this resultant the same resultant r2 will be acting in this direction again making an angle of here the angle is going to be same 29.03 and here with the horizontal again it's going to be 29.03 the name of the force you know very well that's action and reaction force that is r2 okay this r2 was from this 1000 newton block onto this wedge and this r2 is from this wedge onto this 1000 newton block and if if, if you want to go ahead and calculate it it's going to be very easy so this n2 and 0.5 n2 will have will have a result in something of this sort okay this is going to be that resultant that is going to be r2 and if you watch carefully if you watch carefully this angle is 15 and this angle okay with the normal is 5 that is 14.03 so 15 plus again 14.03 is 29.03 with this horizontal that's why simple then we have this 1000 newton force let me put it that's 1000 newton force and finally finally we've got this point of contact one we are going to have a resultant something of this sort okay let me make it properly r1 making an angle of how much phi phi is nothing but 14.03 and now let me try to fit this force r1 into this this point diagram here we go so r1 makes an angle of phi with the vertical you can see it's going to be 14.03 so this angle right here is 14.03 and that's the line of action of r1 that's r1 and this angle right here is 14.03 degrees so we've got all the forces worked out and you can clearly see that lemmy's theorem is applicable for three forces passing through one single point and how that essentially can be applied let me show you okay so if in this particular diagram if you watch carefully this r2 r3 and p all of the forces are unknown we need at least one force whose magnitude is known to us and then the remaining two forces can easily be worked out by applying the lemmy's theorem and here you can clearly see that we have three forces r1 r2 and 1000 so this is known to us 1000 newton so based on this force we can get the value of r1 as well as r2 okay and if you watch carefully we only need the value of r2 which we are going to use here on framing the lemmy's equation by the help of which this uh, this unknown force p can easily be calculated 
Anyway, let's kick off and initially, let's try to apply Lamy's theorem for this 1000 Newton block. Here we go. So I'm going to kick off with this 1000 force divided by sine of the angle between the remaining two forces. If you watch carefully, the remaining two forces are, well, this is R1 and this is R2. So the remaining, so the angle between the remaining two forces is 14.03 plus 90 degrees plus 29.03. Okay, let me go ahead and write this 14.03 plus 90 degrees and plus 29.03 and let me close the bracket. Okay, and this is essentially going to be equal to, um, let me write it completely, uh, R1, let's say, let's write this for R2 initially, let's say, R2. Okay, if R2 is the force and the remaining two forces are 1000 and this R1. And you can clearly see that the angle between this and this is 180 minus 14.03. That is pretty obvious. This is the angle I'm talking about. Okay. 180 degrees minus 14.03. So that's it. Sine of 180 minus 14.03. Done. Next, let's talk about R1. Although we don't need the value of R1. Still, I'll show you how its value can be calculated. Okay, for R1, these are the two, these are the two unknown, uh, sorry, these are the two remaining forces. And if I were to calculate the angle between 1000 Newton and R2, it would be 90 degrees minus 29.03. It's that simple. So it's going to be sine of 90 minus 29.03. Oh, it would be appropriate if I can change the pen color. Yeah, you just need to solve this. Okay, you just need to solve this and from here you can work out this value of R2 and let me tell you the value of R2 will work out as let me check what was the value let me see the value of R2 will work out as 333.27 let me write it 333.27 is the resultant of of what of the normal and the friction force acting at this very point that is point 0.2 so that's done. Now we are going to be using this this force somewhere here. Now let's try to frame the same Lamy's equation. Uh, Lamy's. Uh, let's try to frame an equation with the help of Lamy's theorem rather. Okay, so we've got this p all divided by sine of the angle between the remaining two forces. So the remaining two forces are this R two and this R three, and clearly the angle between these two is this one. So it's one eighty minus twenty nine point zero three minus fourteen point zero three. So it's 180 minus 29.03 minus what 14.03 that's it we extend this slightly and it's equal to and let's talk about this r2 okay r2 if r2 is the force that we are considering then the remaining two forces are p and this r3 it's it's very clear cut sign of the angle between this r3 and p clearly see this angle right here is nothing but one half so not 180 but it's 90 degrees and 90 plus 14.03 90 plus 14.03 and that's it it's also equal to what r3 although we don't have to write this i'm still doing so for the purpose of applying the lemis um, theorem completely r3 divided by the this these are the two forces you can clearly see this angle is 90 degrees, so 90 plus 29.03, the angle between R2 and P. So sine of the angle between R2 and P, that's 90 plus 29.03. <coughs> so guys, that's done. You now need to solve this. You know what the value of R2 is. R2's value is this one. It's just 333.27. You need to put the value of R2 over here so that you can finally obtain the value of p and it's going to work out as let me see it's going to work out as precisely 234.5 newtons okay you can go ahead and verify this with the help of analytical technique also i'm pretty much sure that you are going to get a, an answer which is very very close to this one so guys that was all from my side for today if you've got any doubt or query to write them down in the comment section below i'll be very happy to answer them and if you believe that this video tutorial has enhanced your knowledge of mechanics, then do share and like this video, subscribe to this channel and also press the bell icon so that you can have instant notification. 
Now I'm going to be back with more such videos on friction and whole lot of topics I'm going to be covering up. Until then, it's a wrap. This is Manas Patnaik signing off. Take care. Have a great day. Keep learning. Thank you.